Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. I'm down up the River Irwell in Salford. Where else would I be? <laughs> so as the name of this video suggests, five pieces of historical trivia. Um, just little things we're going to look at. Remarkable survivors from the past. Now nothing grandiose or wonderful, just little tiny pieces of detail that you could overlook or some people might not even be interested in. But I think they're wonderful and they're just sort of like in a city that's expanding all the time we've got skyscrapers going up all over Manchester glass buildings and steel everywhere these are things that are still there just little reminders of the past so the first one we're going to go over to East Manchester Openshaw to look at something that I think is remarkable let's go to East Manchester and there you go, there's a rough guide to today's video. We start in East Manchester at number one, which is a place called Openshaw. Two and three are almost city centre, four is Salford, and we finish off in northwest Manchester at number five at a place called Kersley. So our journey is east to west. Welcome to East Manchester. We're just off Aston Old Road. And remember, these things are trivial, but the things that I get excited about because they're uh, little survivors. We're going to a street now called Redby Street. The street doesn't exist anymore. In fact, if I just look across the road there, this was a street. This was uh, this road here had little terrace streets coming off it all the way down there. You can see now it's just all overgrown. But there, just behind the black car, was Redby Street. And Redby Street is still there, the cobbles are still there, but it's got a remarkable survivor on it. Let's just go over now and we'll go over that little mound and let me just show you what is there. Don't hold your breath, these are things that only I get excited about. I'm hoping you do too. Got to go over the conveniently made mound. Okay, so we're on Redby Street. Just take a look at this little survivor. The sets are still here, why well, I call them cobbles. But look at this. Railway tracks in the street. A remarkable survivor of Manchester's, East Manchester's industrial past. This is Openshaw. Um, there was so much industry around here at one time, it, it's been decimated over the years, absolutely decimated. But it's fascinating that this line connected the main line to a big um, English steel which was over there, beyond the mound there. I'll show you where it was. And there would have been trucks and locomotives that went across down this track and across the main road, Ashton Old Road, one of the main arterial routes in Manchester, he would have crossed the main road, probably had a guy in front with a flag and a whistle or whatever stopping the traffic, and they went that way to, a, like I say, a big firm called English Steel. I've got some old photos to show you, I think I've got a, a photograph of a lo one of the locomotives that possibly traversed this track and went up and down it. Behind the camera, I'm going to show you this way here, you can see the, uh, the old gates where uh, the trains would have gone in. Now I think this was a link down to the main line. You see that there, the old brick wall there? Well, that was the way that the, the, the locomotives and the trains went. Like I say, think it links to a, what is now a freight line. I'll have to have a look at the map and double check for you. But the line went on that way, down Wood Street there, to English Steel. So we're just going to follow it across there and look at the old, uh, what I think might be the entrance to the old English Steel. But yeah, this is Redby Street. Long since gone, but there was houses here, there was a little shop on the corner. Obviously a, a shadow of what it used to be, but remarkable that these railway lines survive. Right, there you go. That should explain what's going on here. This is an old map, late 1800s, early 1900s. You'll see at the bottom of the screen we've got uh, engineering works and the railway line comes out, goes across all those streets, up... Um, our street along Wood Street and goes to the top of the screen where there's another engineering firm, English Steel. Now the engineering firm at the bottom of the screen, I don't know what that was called, whether that was a division of English Steel, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I know the top one was English Steel. Another anomaly I need to just point out to you. The horizontal street at the, at the bottom of the, the at the bottom of our screen near the, the works is Whitworth Street. 
Looking vertically, our little street is called Derby Street. Now, at some point, it's changed its name to Redby Street, an anagram of Derby Street. I don't know why that's happened, but this um, this map predates the photos that I'm going to show you, and it predates, obviously, you know, me going there the other day. For your reference, if you wanted to go and look at this, I'm not suggesting you will do, but if you did, you'd be looking for Redby Street. Obviously, at some point earlier in its history, it was called Derby Street. Anyway, in the photos I'm going to show you, it's called Redby Street. Um, so, and then we're going to walk up uh, Wood Street and go to the former entrance to Eng English Steel. Um, so, let's go and take a look at the old uh, Redby Street back in the 60s, former Derby Street. It's very hard to believe that that street there became this. Let's take a trip across the main road, down Wood Street to see where the line went to. So behind us there are the gates to the former English Steel. We're at the end of Wood Street now. English Steel was in there. See the big gates, the big gates and everything? The gate post there is probably a shadow of what it used to be. I've got a picture of how this used to look and it was fantastic. I'll show you the picture. Well, we'll just take a look inside the yard as well, see if we can see any remains of the railway track. So it looks like the tracks have long since gone from this side. Uh, but you can see, still an industrial area. And probably that building over there in the distance was actually part of the old English steel that was. And so I had to ask the question, well, what was what went along these tracks? What was the, was it just trucks? What pulled the, these uh, trucks or whatever, these goods along Redby Street and up Wood Street? And I found this picture. Here it is. Now, I'm not an expert on these things, but apparently it's an 040 ST, Robert Stevenson and Hawthorns, built in 1939. Pictured at English Steel Corporation Openshaw Works on the 20th of May, 1962. Would you look at that? Now, of course, English Steel later became British Steel, um, but they proudly boasted their uh, their achievements and the stuff that they made. But uh, yeah, so industrial around here, and it's just changed forever. Anyway, I won't uh, keep going on. So now let's go into Manchester City Centre. That's the next stop to take uh, a look at the next piece of uh, historical trivia. Right, here we are, Manchester City Centre, just off Oldham Road, a place I know quite well. Used to park around here for free parking when we used to go to the record shops. And the next piece of historical trivia is there behind me, a remarkable survivor. The Golden Street Police and Fire Station. A shadow of what it was, a bit of a shell. Well, let's go and check out. But what a wonderful thing amongst all these skyscrapers and building sites and these cloned towers that are going up of glass and steel. There you go, I just love that brick tower there. How amazing is that? And the old pillars are still up there and you can just about make out where the doors were for the fire station down the other side. 
I think there's plans for it. I found something in the Manchester Evening News that said they make there's, there's plans for to renovate it, and it looks quite good. But I'm glad they've saved it because it could have been so easy for them to pull all that down and decimate the place. Um, but I just love that brick tower, that chimney. It's fantastic. There you go, it looks a bit hazy that because I had to put the exposure up on the camera, but it's wonderful that tower. There are plans for it, and guess where it's going to be? You won't guess, no honestly you won't guess, it's going to be apartments, but I suppose it's better than nothing, and that's how it's going to look, and if they put a light on the top, I suppose mm, it'll look pretty good I suppose, at least they're not pulling it down. I'm going to go around the other side, see if we can see where the doors came out onto the street. So we've just come around the other side, and this is where the fire doors would have been quite small fire doors which sort of like suggest to me how old it is and that it would have just been like horse-drawn carts maybe that came out of here I don't quite know okay clock those doors because I'm going to show you a picture imagine standing slightly to the right and looking to your left look at this picture now wow there you go <laughs> uh, mounted police that were here in this place there was uh, they also had a stables inside it as well uh, but how fantastic is that picture? Uh, copyright from the um, the Manchester Police Museum. So thank you very much for, for allowing us to use that and, and for educational and informative purposes. And that's how the building looked. How fantastic is that? Again, that picture is copyright at the Greater Manchester Police Museum uh, and we're using it for educational and informative purposes. And I thank them um, for putting that up and, um, and so we can use it. You can see the stack, the chimney stack there, just above uh, above the roof. Um, so that was completely surrounded by a building, which isn't obvious when we look at it now. So what what dates have we got? Well, I'm going to read to you from ManchesterHistory.net. Um, so thank you for them for putting some information about this place. The station opened in March 1872 as the B Division headquarters of Manchester Police. It was a replacement for an older station in Swan Street, which is just round the corner. And that older station in Swan Street housed a small hand fire pump since 1863. So there you go. It was a police station and, and this became a bit of a fire station as well. Um, there was a steam fire engine that stationed there from 1891. Permanent fire brigade staff at Golden Street varied between 5 and 10 over the years of operation. Um, so, okay, so it closed as a fire station on the 4th of April 1916 and it was handed over for full use to the police. In November 2002, there was a big fire there and it destroyed uh, much of the building. So what's left is probably going to be saved and like I say, will become apartments. But how brilliant is that picture? I just love it. So there you go. That's Golden Street Police and Fire Station. Right, moving on to the next one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw one in here because I think there's something going on down at the River Irk in a location we know quite well from these videos. So let's just nip down to the River Irk, see what's going on as this little extra thing we're going to throw in. Right, this is a place in Manchester called Scotland, would you believe? Scotland Bridge is there. That's an entire history in itself. But this is the River Irk, flowing well today. You'll notice there's a pontoon there in the, uh, in the middle of the river. I'll show you the interesting bit up here because you, some of you may or may not have seen that because the River Irk then plummets underneath Manchester Victoria Station. One of my most favourite parts of Manchester, this. Down there, the River Irk plummets underneath Manchester Victoria Station, comes out the other side at the River Irwell. I've been in there and done a video in there, so you can, if you want to check out that video, you can do. I didn't go down the weir though, the brave people go down the weir, I went the easier way. So why the pontoon, why the wires across there and what exactly are they doing here? I'll go down there where it's more quiet and I'll tell you what's, what's going on. Well, I've just heard from a reliable source, I think he was a gentleman that was working here, he was telling me what they're doing. The drilling, the drilling boreholes in the arch over there. They've gone inside the arch, they've drilled a borehole. They're actually going into the middle of the river bed again to drill a borehole to see what's underneath there. They should have asked me because it's rock. I know that it's probably the sandstone that Manchester sits on and that extends right out to Liverpool and over to Stockport. So I'm thinking it's the old sandstone bluff. What they're talking about doing is flood management, possibly in the future. 
lower the level of the river now you saw the weir there if they lower the floor of the river to the bottom of the weir this channel here can take a lot more flood water in the future makes sense because at times where the river the Irk is in flood it completely comes really up high probably to the other side of this wall here I'm stood on and then races down underneath Manchester Victoria the bridge just over here is already half full with the river Irk at the minute um, and it's also part of a new scheme they're doing around there called St Catharines or the Northern Gateway which is like looking at Colliers Road and all, all the, the areas where we've done the videos up towards H. Marcel Guest Paintworks and redoing the whole uh, area. There's the disused railway line here that we've done videos on in the past and everything. It's all going to change and this is part of it, looking at lowering the riverbed. How fascinating is that? I've never seen that done before. I'm sure it has been done before. Anyway, let's crack on to the next location which is just over the other side here, a place we know well, Angel Meadow. Been a long time since I've made a video around here. Going right back to our roots here now. Full of laughing children, the way it should be. But it used to be called St. Michael's Flags. Uh, and this used to be an old burial ground. As I've said before, 40,000 lay underneath that field there. So where the children play there, the are better playing on the graveyard. Anyway. I've got an old photo to show you of Angel Meadow the, where it used to be and I need to go to this area over here. There's two things I'm going to show you here today, uh, quite interesting. So I'm going to give you a view um, and then I'm going to show you a photo. Right, so first of all the view. Okay, so you see the tree there and you'll see over there. The street there behind the trees is Gold Street. And you'll see it's all sort of landscape now, but there used to be a building here. Take a look at this photograph. There you go. Now, believe it or not, that is Angel Meadow. That's how it used to be, completely neglected, overgrown. There was all flags on the ground. It was also known as St. Michael's Flags. Uh, that was taken in 1972. See the gasometers long since gone. Uh, just in the distance uh, underneath the gasometer you'll see a building let's get a closer look at that building here it is this is also taken in 1972 look at that building there right not a great deal of information about it but just clock those and I want to come to um, a painting that was done of the same area it's ironic that the kids are playing at the moment because I want you to look at this painting there you go that's a wonderful painting taken again uh, on St. Michael's Flags, it's called, uh, the painting's called Dinner Hour, St. Michael's Flags, Angel Meadow, Manchester, September 1931. Um, artist Albert Vincent Reed. So, it gives so much away. You can see the gasometers. You can see there was a park there. That street in the distance that you see the back of, that was Irk Street. And there's the building. So, look at the gasometer. You'll see the building. Um... I'll put an X on it there for you. I think that's the building, but we'll come back to this painting anyway. Okay, so you've seen the view. And we know that there used to be a building. And it's gone. Gone forever. Okay, let's just have a refresher on this building. So that picture was taken in 1972. And it's St Michael's Hall. From what I understand, it was a Sunday school, sort of church hall from for St Michael's Church, which was... As we stand looking at that, St. Michael's Church was behind us in Angel Meadow. So that's St. Michael's Hall. Um, 72, it must have been pulled down probably in the 70s. What I want you to do, I want you to clock the windows. In particular, the windows on the ground floor between the two doorways. Look how long and narrow they are. They, that will become apparent later. Um... I, my earliest visit, visit to Angel Meadow was in the 90s. I don't remember seeing this thing at all, so it must have gone in the 70s sometime. It looks dilapidated, dilapidated there. Anyway, let's crack on with the video. The path there leads up to Gould Street. And I just want to take you on that path because it could be that that building is not quite gone. I'm so excited that I've been waiting so long to show you this. Let's go up here and take a look. So here we are, Gold Street. The gasworks was there, did a video on that. 
Now, there you go, looks like a wall, but it's not, of course it's not. It's the remains of that building and hundreds of people walk and drive past here all the time and don't know what they're looking at. So I've been waiting to show you this for ages because I've known for, about it for quite a while. The picture just puts all this into context. This is fantastic. Like I say, people walk and drive past this all the time and probably wonder what it is. Look at the font there. The little arch font there. How fun brilliant is that? And this is the only remainder we've got of that building. It's an old uh, Sunday school. Uh, there's not a great deal of information about it, but um, really poor area around here there would have been generations of children that came to this Sunday school and probably learned and did their ABC and learned about the Bible and this these classes in this place absolutely fantastic that this little piece of trivia still remains and has survived to this day I don't know how much longer it's gonna survive but this is just amazing I'm with Danny today and he's just come up with a bit of a gem because he's got his this his, he notices things that I don't so he's got this eye and he goes into things and starts staring and, and looking at things and he's found something again absolute trivia but it's amazing obviously these were the windows and if you go down here and look look at that there's a little bit of glass just there just a little piece of the original glass that's still in there look at that I mean what kind of a survivor is that? I think on one of them we saw a pattern, didn't we? If we go to the next one. <clears throat> yeah, is that a pattern on it there? Or is that a crack? Not sure if that's a pattern or a crack. My camera won't zoom heavily, it, it, it'll start to blur. But yeah, it is a pattern because if you look there, is it that wire in the glass? This one's got a full frame. Yeah. Intact. yeah, and we've still got the steel frame there. Look at the steel frame there, and then the glass there. And then obviously, this has just been done later, this, this, this bricking up. But yeah, a little piece of trivia, but when you know what it is, how fantastic is that? And look at the red sandstone there. That was probably possibly quarried at um, Collier Start just down the road, and then you see the old. These old nails in here, what were they all about? What were they for? Maybe some of you will know, I'm not quite sure. Well, there you go. The remains of that building. The apartments on the other side of the park are already going up. They're almost finished and there's big plans for this area. I hope the developers who do plan to alter the park somewhat um, respect the remains of this building and know what it is and don't plow through it in order to sort of landscape that up to the main road. We don't want to lose that building. So to the, the friends of Angel Meadow that are active in the area, don't let it go, let's keep it. Okay, very quickly, I want to show you something else in Angel Meadow Park that's hidden away, that's a remnant of the past. Look on the side-by-side -side maps there, you'll see Style Street. And on the right-hand side, that's the modern-day view. Well, it's as modern as the side-by-side -side maps go. You'll see the cross. That's where, that's where Style Street would be. That corresponds with what we're looking at on the left-hand side. Style Street has long since gone. Um, let's just go back to our paint in a moment. Okay, Style Street is the building with the white X on it. You'll notice behind that building that there's a bank that goes upwards to Old Mount Street. So Style Street was 
actually in where what we know as in the park now, and it's gone. You'll notice in front of those that building with the white X on, there's like a, a wall, railings or something. Now, I know it's dodgy relying on a painting because of artistic license and all the rest of it, but that wall, that, those railings are still there in the park. Let's go and take a look. I'm stood on the wall at the back of Style Street. Let me show you. You see that ridge there? It's actually a wall, the top of a wall. And there, you'll see, was railings. See the top of the railing there, it's been cut off. And that was the top of a wall. And this here would have been the backs of Style Street there. The backs onto there. So the park at one time was a lot smaller. And I think it's wonderful that the top of that wall still exists. I could be wrong, but I think I'm pretty much sure that was something to do with Style Street. Uh, it, it must be because it was there. That's where it was and now it's gone. I've uncovered this picture and it's off the Manchester Libraries and it says Style Street. Now, the issue I've got is that it says um, Style Street, Red Bank. Now, Red Bank is in this area, but it's not. This is the, this area isn't bang on Red Bank, so this could be a different style street. You'll notice the railings, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit iffy as to whether that's the actual one or not. Um, I'm gonna have to leave this one up in the air, but yeah, Red Bank isn't far away. I've looked at the old maps. I can't find another style street on Red Bank. It could be wrong the way it's listed on the Manchester Libraries. But that could be a picture of Style Street. Uh, maybe the Friends of Angel Meadow, if they watch this video, may know. Anyway, let's crack on. So from here in the city centre, Angel Meadow, we're moving on to Salford. So we're here in Salford, Great Clue Street. Now in Manchester, we've got a modern day tram system. But what we're going to look at here is a remnant of the old tram system, the old 1900s trams, the great big heavy things that were double-deckers that used to trundle along the streets of Salford. Um, obviously ran on track, and that's why we're here. There you go, that kind of tram, the old-fashioned ones. I couldn't actually find a picture of one on Great Clue Street, but here's some Salford trams for you. Anyway, let's take a look at these tracks. Remarkable survivors. Right, you can kind of make out here what's going on, but it gets better than this. But if we go to the top end, the actual metal in the tracks is still there. It's only a very, very short section. There you go, you can just see there, the metal of the tram line is still down there. Look at that, look at that. And there's the other, the other you can see the other side of it there as well, can't you? See that? How fantastic is that? Now amazingly, you see the car park cars, you see the street, the way it goes narrow. That would have been a big trunk route straight through back to Berry, uh, back to Berry New Road. You can really see them there now, can't you? Look at that. How amazing is that? And then unfortunately they disappear there into the undergrowth. But another little detail, you look at the edge of the curb there. See the, the metal on the edge of the curb? Do you know what that's for? I know a lot of you do. That was to stop the uh, horse and carts grinding away at the curb and eroding the curb, so they put a metal edge on it. So there you go. And then strangely, the trams must have ran on the edge there because that is a drop now down towards the River Irwell. Now, you know how I said I can't work out where the tram went because it goes very narrow and into undergrowth. I wonder if there's been some sort of landslide here because We've got a, an edge there down to the River Irwell, and if you look at the cobbles, what I call cobbles, you some people call sets. There, look, look how they just end midair, and there's quite a drop down there. And I wonder if there's been a landslide, probably, possibly caused by those heavy trams rattling along here, that are probably caused. You know, re they were really heavy, weren't they? Probably caused a landslide. If we go to the other side of there, we'll take a look, see if we can see any, ev any evidence. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. I'll just zoom in for you. Look at the edge there. I definitely think there's been a landslide there, hasn't there? You can see along there. And the drop down there is quite remarkable. Oh, there it is. Look, there's the road. There it is, look, on its side. 
Wow. Now, I never knew about that. That's possibly documented somewhere. So I'll see if we can find some documentation of the uh, the landslip here. I didn't know that. I'm learning something with you here now today. Now, as we're in the area where that big red X is, that's called Kersal Dale. And it's a lovely, beautiful sort of nature reserve. And we thought we'd have a look down there and it drops down to the River Irwell. And of course, we couldn't resist. So looking around this area, we came up with a few finds. So you can imagine we're walking around here and this is what we're finding. And we're looking and we're going, hang on, what on earth are we looking at here? Dressed stone in the woods? <laughs> What's this all about? So obviously our fascination was aroused massively and we had to find out, we had to get home, look at the old maps to find out what was going on here. What have we found here? Look at the work that's gone into that. And then we found the pipe and our minds were blown. That goes quite deep into the ground. That is strange. Not got a clue what that is. Any ideas? Perhaps I should have called this video Six Historical Survivors. But if I'd have brought you to a pipe, you might not have had it. But that is, uh, we're very excited about that. That's amazing, isn't it? Because it would obviously would have gone up because something's been bolted on there and given all the bolts on the flange, possibly something under pressure here in the middle of Kersal Vale. <sighs> Gobsmacked. Somebody somewhere will know what that is. Right, so what is going on? Kersal Dale, a, a, a place I've probably passed loads of times, but it's new to me. A very beautiful woods, now a lovely nature reserve. But what's going on? We had to go back to the old maps to try and find out what we were looking at. What are these things that we're finding in the woods? Because it's very interesting. So, Kersal Dale, it says, it's written, that in the 19th century, the Clues family decided to develop their land in Broughton, but only for grand houses and suitable public buildings. Um, the area was described as... Uh, elegant, opulent, and bucolic. So this is a wealthy area. This is, you know, these lodges and these houses are for some very, very wealthy people. Now, let's go back to that landslip because I've found some information on that and it will link into this. There had been landslips along Great Clue Street, 1887 and 1888 and early in, in the uh, 1920s. In 1926, Great Clue Street was closed to mechanically propelled vehicles. And then it goes on to say, on the 15th of July, 1927, the worst landslip happened, causing part of Great Clue Street to fall away. And it's this event which seems to have been the cause of the abandonment of all the cottages and all the lovely lodges and houses around the Kersal Dale area. And knowing it, the area myself and knowing the River Irwell, this would have been prone to flood, landslips. This was not a good place to build your opulent, beautiful house. So... That was the end of the area, and now it's just a nature reserve. So there you go, a brief history of Kersal Dale. But it doesn't answer the question, what about the pipe? So we studied the map, looking for some remains of industry, looking for something that it could have been, because it was very solid in the ground, and it was obviously, you know, a pipe that was under pressure because of the flange on it and everything. Studied the map, studied the map, no industry, nothing, just this opulent... Victorian, you know, um, rich area. And then Danny said to me, how do you power a fountain? And indeed, the place had two big fountains, apparently. Um, so I'm going to stick my neck out here and say, I think that pipe took water, possibly from the river. It was pressurised somehow, because it would have needed to be, to have driven a fountain, possibly two fountains, and that's what it was for. It was to drive the fountains in this area. They had money. They could have done this quite easily. So unless you know differently, I think that pipe 
was for those two fountains you see there on the map. From Kersal Lodge that we threw in unexpectedly and the tram tracks on Great Clue Street. We're going to head west now towards Swinton and Kersley to look at our final destination. So West Manchester, Kersley and we're here out in the Irwell Valley where all the pits were. What were some of them called? Unity Brook, Clifton Colliery, Clifton Moss, Clifton Moss Spindle, Point. Spindle Point. Spindle Point was just over here, that way over there. Anyway, tramways, tramways everywhere. And we've been looking at this a point that, that goes underneath the main road, the main A666 road here. And there was a tramway that went underneath and we've spotted the bridge parapets. So we're looking to see if we can see a tunnel that would be ideal or the top of the portal of the tunnel so we're just going to go down there now into the undergrowth to see what we can see okay allow me to explain this area was a uh, lot of mining activity around here a lot of pits as i've just mentioned a lot of tramways as well referred to as mineral railways on this map this old map See the red X's, that's where they are and you can follow them along and you'll see where they go and they're running and linking up all the collieries in this area. Where the blue arrow is, the uh, tramway goes underneath the main road. Danny's been looking at Google Maps and he's seen a bridge parapet, so he's thinking, hang on, is there still something underneath there, still some sort of tunnel underneath there or bridge that we can go look at? So that's what we're investigating. Let's go and take a look, but it involves us going through some horrible undergrowth. Okay, so here we are. Lights failing as per usual, winter time. Anyway, that wall is actually a bridge parapet. That's what we're looking at. There's some stables behind here, so that's what we're interested in. Now on this side of the road, I'm going to show you behind in a moment. On this side of the road, it's all filled in. There would have been a tramway down there now. Uh, completely filled in if you dug down there there'd be a, a portal of a tunnel so we go to the other side of the road there where the, or where the other parapet is so we're going to cross the road now and go into that undergrowth and see if we can see the other side we've just come down the bank off the road there it's there in it we need to go that way right i'll come back to you when i've found where i'm going not the easiest route ever <laughs> Right, right. you see the wall there, to the top of the parapet there. I just want to show you this side because it's completely filled in. This one's a bit of a disaster because there's nothing left of it. We were hoping to find some sort of like tunnel, at least the top of a portal. But alas, they've done a damn good job of filling it in. Um, you can see what we've come through. You won't be able to do this in uh, summer. But it's quite steep there, that embankment's quite steep and they've just shoved everything up down there was a tramway Right, well you win some you lose some but I ended up taking you all the way out to uh, Kersley to look at a wall but when you know what it is, it's an old tramway bridge parapet um, we got a bit excited about it didn't we Danny? Proper, we, we, yeah. we, got, we quite liked it so anyway um, <laughs> you've seen what we have to do, we went through all that even in December, all that undergrowth and uh, just if we'd have found the top of the portal of the tunnel or even the tunnel, it would have been amazing, you know, uh, but you win some, like I say, you win some, you lose some. So nothing there, but we had to go and check it out. So there you go. I told you they were just little tiny pieces of trivia, didn't I? But quite reassuring in this day and age and wonderful that they're still there. Uh, I love stuff like that and a lot of it will be gone soon you know it's gonna that some of those those tracks especially on Redby Street over in Openshaw that's gonna get developed those tracks are gonna be gone forever uh, but anyway hope you enjoyed that video which one was your favorite I'm not sure that I've got a favorite or not I think I liked them all and interesting what they're doing down at the River Irk as well in it so from the River Irwell here in Salford thanks for watching oh we're back next week with the second part of the Cornbrook so anyway from the River Irwell in Salford that's uh, flowing nice and still but deep at the moment. Take care and I shall see you very soon in the next video, Cornbrook 2, next week. Bye for now.